Officials in Manitoba are asking for patience as they carry out a painstaking investigation into that terrible crash near Carberry last week. Fifteen people were killed, ten more were injured and remain in hospital. Five are in critical condition. At an update earlier, RCMP explained why the investigation is so complex. We have to determine accurate answers and when I talk about accurate answers, we mean was someone at fault here? Our job as investigators is to rule that out or to rule that in. And that, that we get there by gathering evidence. So oftentimes in these types of scenes, it's difficult to gather evidence. It's very difficult because normally we have numerous amount of eyewitnesses. In this case, we don't, all the witnesses were in the bus and a lot of them are in trauma right now that we can't talk to. So we have to rely on uh, forensic investigations, mechanical analysis of the vehicle, and, and things like that. And that's why it's taking so long. The CBC's Cameron McIntosh joins us now in Dauphin, where most of the victims were from. And Cam, what more did we learn about the investigation from today's update? Well, really, as you heard the superintendent there explain, this isn't so much about what happened, it's why it happened and how it happened. It's relatively clear that the semi-trailer struck the bus as the bus was trying to cross over the Trans-Canada Highway, but what went into that? Was this negligence on behalf of the bus driver? Was there a mechanical problem? Those are questions that aren't clear right now. So what the RCMP are doing here is they're taking a look at the evidence on the ground. So skid marks, debris that may have wound up in the ditch, all that sort of thing, and matching that up with data that may have been recorded in the instruments of the semi-trailer, or taking a look at uh, the mechanical aspects of what remains of that minibus, and there's not much left of it. It was burned right down to the chassis. So we were explained today by the RCMP that this is a very long, complicated and specialized process. It's not like they can just go into the truck and put a USB key into the dashboard and get all the information they need. It's far more specialized than that. It could take weeks, if not months. So that's the investigation. As for what happened, what happened, there's more to that as well. Many of the bodies were damaged to such a degree that they require autopsies just to be identified. So there's a long process there for the families and the community here when it comes to identifying who was killed, although most people here in the community do know who was killed and do know who was injured. Meanwhile, there are a lot of questions being asked about that intersection. It's one of many at grade intersections along the Trans-Canada Highway in Manitoba. That means there's no overpass there. It's controlled by a stop sign or a light. This one was controlled by a stop sign. The Premier of Manitoba was asked about that today and whether this accident will cause the government to take a look at that situation along the Trans-Canada Highway. Here's what she had to say. After any accident or incident on our highways, there is an internal review that takes place. So that review is taking place right now. Uh, because of the extent of uh, the severity of this review, uh, we know we're prepared to go beyond that and bring in experts as, as needed moving forward to see what, what that will look like. And we will unfold those and, and uh, you know, the details of that uh, in due course. So the Premier is saying that this intersection will be looked at but non-committal on whether any changes will be made to it. Manitoba is spending a lot of money right now on highway improvements around Winnipeg and out towards the Ontario border. But a lot of people here in Manitoba and people that routinely drive through Manitoba will tell you the conditions of the highways in this province aren't the best. And Cam, what's the latest on the victims? Well, on the victims, we know that 10 people went to hospital. 10 people survived this crash, including the driver of the bus. Of those, five are in critical care. Over the course of the weekend, one person's uh, status was downgraded from critical care to more stable. So those people are, nine of them are in Winnipeg. One of them is in Brandon. One of those people that we believe to be in critical care is actually the driver of the bus. The RCMP have said that they are worried for his survival and that they have not yet had the opportunity to speak with him, although they would really like to. They do say that they have spoke with other survivors of this crash and that's information that they say is extremely valuable. But however, given the trauma, given the injuries some of these people have sustained, it's not clear right now whether the information they've been able to get so far is really all that good. The RCMP today saying that 
over time, it can take a while for people that have been through an accident like this to be able to talk about it in a way that the RCMP can get some useful and actionable information on. So a long process is unfolding here, Andrew, and really today's news conference from an RCMP perspective, I think was really about managing expectations. They won't be able to say definitively what happened here for a very long time. And, and Cam, you, you've spent some time in Dauphin. How are people there doing? Well, you know, I've been explaining this by saying Dauphin is a small city. It's a little more than 8,000 people, so it's not quite the type of place where everyone knows everyone, but everyone has a connection one way or another. So people that weren't directly impacted by this, say a family member, may know someone or may have a friend that knows someone. So information is moving around the community and there is a lot of sorrow here and a lot of shock. We were talking to people yesterday when they were coming in and out of church and this is clearly what people are talking about in the community and there's just kind of a sense of how did this happen and now that's kind of transitioning into okay what do we do about it? How does the community mark this? The comparison everyone makes is to Humboldt. While it was a very similar accident, the response is different. In that case, it was a hockey team. It was a face of the community, a focus of the community. There was something to rally around, a logo, an arena, and people did that. Here, that doesn't really exist. These were 25 individuals that were traveling all to the same place, but not necessarily as one big group. So this is really being treated like a like a uh, situation that affects 25 families directly. And the community right now is trying to figure out how to deal with that. And speaking with the mayor today and speaking with faith leaders, they do plan to have some sort of community event along the lines of a vigil, but they're just not sure yet when that's gonna take place and where that's gonna take place and really how that's gonna take place.